here in this video why getting better kidney function means forgetting about food restriction. In medical literature, when kidney disease patients are finally free to eat all the healthy foods they want, they finally start to improve their GFR. Here is an example. This man got an increase in kidney function of the 73% when he stopped avoiding the foods I will show you today. Here is what he says about that. I could begin eating foods that I've been depriving myself of for years because I thought they were unhealthy. So this man started to eat the foods that were previously forbidden to him and he got an improvement in kidney function of the 73%, which is huge. So the question is, do you prefer to keep following a super restrictive diet that makes your life unbearable and does nothing good for your kidneys? Or do you want to learn what actually works? Because while there are some foods that are actually bad for your kidneys, such as those containing protein and those containing sugar, for example, most of what CKD patients are told to avoid will actually be good for them. There are, in fact, three huge groups of foods that most CKD patients are still avoiding today and that are extremely healthy. Yes, you are probably avoiding foods that are a must in a renal diet that works. Don't miss our number one in particular because that's probably the most underrated group of foods on earth when it comes to the diet for kidney disease. Before that, a group of foods that is especially dear to my subscribers is number three, bananas and other high potassium foods. Okay guys, this is great news for everyone. If you have kidney disease, you must not follow a blanket ban on high potassium foods anymore. Foods including spinach, potatoes, tomatoes, broccoli, beets, avocados, and many more are back on the menu. And we can all celebrate because the more fruit and veggies you eat, the better your kidneys are going to be, as we can see. And obviously, your potassium levels must be kept under control, but not with the diet. More about this in a moment. Before that, let's debunk the potassium myth once and for all. Because every time I talk about high potassium foods, some people in the comments are concerned. I'll read you a comment. Red potatoes, known to be high in potassium, so Catherine, you should state in all your videos exact measurements or exactly how much in grams or milligrams is safe for CKD patients. We need to know exact portions. Okay, but should I really state in all my videos exact measurements or exactly how much in grams or milligrams is safe for CKD patients? Is this what we are doing here? Well, if you ask science, it turns out these exact measurements don't really matter. Actually, most high potassium foods are very healthy for your kidneys. How is this possible, you may ask? Well, potassium is a naturally alkaline mineral, meaning that it fights the acidity in the body and also vitamin C. Vitamin C is one of the most important vitamins, but many CKD patients struggle to get enough of it. The reason potassium, vitamin C and potassium go together in most of the cases, all right? Most foods that are known to be high in vitamin C are also high in potassium. Citrus fruits, spinach, potatoes, tomatoes, broccoli, beets, avocados, and many more actually. In nature, where there is vitamin C, there is potassium. This is only part of the reason why all of the cases of people reversing kidney disease we will see in medical literature happen when the patient is finally allowed to eat high potassium foods without limitations. 
This is why today doctors must lift the blanket ban on high potassium foods once and for all, says the KDOQI. By the way guys, when I talk about the KDOQI, you must understand that this is the rule book for the diet for kidney disease, alright? So when I tell you that potassium must not be limited anymore, it is not due to a single study. It is because the current guideline for the kidney diet, the rule book, says that potassium must not be limited anymore. If your doctor doesn't follow this rule, they are negating you any chance to get better. Now this change in the rule for CKD management is relatively recent so I can understand why some of you are still convinced that eating high potassium foods is going to harm their kidneys. Okay, but what if my serum potassium level is too high? We know today that if you have high potassium levels, the most probable cause is the medications you take. Now if you have high potassium levels, I don't recommend eating more potassium rich foods before consulting with your doctor and finding the real cause of high potassium levels. But people with normal potassium levels can eat these foods no problem. So do you actually need to know the exact number of milligrams of potassium in your bananas? No, not at all. This you see here is the only number you should be concerned with, your serum potassium level. If this is the right range or even too low, you can absolutely eat high potassium foods. If your serum potassium is too high, talk to your doctor, find a solution. Remember, removing high potassium foods from your diet only works as a strategy to get you in dialysis quicker. What you want to do here is talk to your doctor and get your blood pressure medication replaced with something that doesn't mess your potassium levels up. And this is the rule today, so it's not like your doctor can refuse. And if you find this info useful, consider sharing this video with a friend and give it a like. Up next, our number two is a food group that's causing even more trouble to people with CKD than high potassium foods. Today, I'm here to dispel all your doubts about pasta, bread, all fruits, and other high-carb foods. So the question is, can you eat high-carb foods if you have diabetes? Now guys, I have never seen anyone as worried about their diet as people with diabetes who watch YouTube regularly. Here are some comments. Most kidney disease is caused by diabetes from too many carbs, says this person. And also, to protect your kidneys, eat zero carbs, high fat, medium protein. Okay, this is just someone who commented on my channel. This is not my advice, nor the right advice, by the way. And also another comment. When anybody is obese, the first thing they do is eliminate all carbs. So yeah, there is a huge amount of disinformation going on today and many people are suffering from this while literally losing their sleep over. Carbohydrates. Many of these comments are not just from people that are worried. They are angry. They have been told they must be afraid carbs and that carbs are the enemy. It's just like if they were in a cult. And they are really angry when I publish a video because I show them how their belief is not supported by science in any way. Guys, don't worry, I'm here to reassure you because science says that if you have diabetes, you can actually eat high carb foods without too many problems. As long as you count your calories, even pasta and bread are not necessarily forbidden as long as you pair them with some fiber and fat sources. For example, a small pasta dish with some zucchini and a teaspoon of olive oil on top never hurt anyone. You could even eat that in a diet for weight loss. But how, you may ask, how can someone actually lose weight and eat carbs at the same time? Is this even legal? Well, it absolutely is. The reason is something called first law of the thermodynamics. No, I'm not going to talk about jurisprudence today, don't worry. Just this one law. This is what this law of physics says. The first law of thermodynamics states that energy can neither be created nor destroyed. 
Now, this is a concept that will revolutionize the way you look at your diet, so pay attention. What this law tells us is that since energy can neither be created nor destroyed, all the calories you get from food that you do not burn are going to turn into body fat. All of them, all right? not just carbs. What this also means is that all the calories you remove make you lose weight. Again, not just carbs, all calories are the same in terms of thermodynamics. You could also lose weight by removing protein, for example, or fats, or a combination of the three. It's not where you remove calories from that matters, just the amount of calories you remove. It's the law. And this also means that you should count not just your carbs if you have diabetes, but most importantly, your calories. So is it true that the first thing they do when someone is obese is cutting all carbs? Well, some dietitians and nutritionists do that, all right? Because it can work as a way to lose weight. As we have seen, any kind of calorie you cut will make you lose weight. And while carbs have a bigger impact on weight loss because of the cravings sugar and some ultra-processed carbs create. For some people, it is impossible not to eat more cake once they take one bite. This is why it is not wrong to avoid added sugar and even some processed carbs if those foods cause you cravings but this is not the best way to lose weight, says science. In fact, the best way is only avoiding unhealthy carbs, such as those from added sugar, while still eating fruits and starchy veggies. In short, if you use an app to count your calories, such as chronometer, for example, you will be able to lose weight without damaging your kidneys by cutting healthy carbs from fruit and veggies from your diet. A diet without fruit and veggies is not healthy for you. And let me know in comment section if you still have doubts about this. Up next, number one, a group of foods that's even more controversial than high carb foods. So this is a piece of misinformation that's so rude in people's mind that every time I mention basically any nut or veggie, someone brings it up in comment section. Let's take a look at the back end of double okini. First comment, I thought almond has high oxalate which can cause kidney stones. Beetroot has a lot of oxalates. Oxalates are bad for us. And also, vegetables like spinach, broccoli or kale, as mentioned, may contain rich source of folate, but they are high in oxalates. And also, almonds and pistachios as well as spinach are extremely high in oxalates. Stay away from this. And I got a ton of these comments. I could go on forever. And guys, I know why many of you are worried about oxalates because there are actually people out there who will be better by limiting, not avoiding, just limiting high oxalate foods. And it's important to understand if you are one of them before you choose what to eat and what to avoid. Now let's take a step back for a moment. What foods are rich in oxalate? And most importantly, are they good or bad for you? Some examples of foods that are highest in oxalates include green leafy vegetables, rhubarb in particular, soy, almonds and other nuts, cereal, whole grains, beets. If you follow me here regularly, you probably already know that I've been recommended many of these foods here on Double O Kidney. The reason? Well, same as why I recommended anything else here on Double O Kidney, because there is solid scientific literature supporting the notion that these foods, when eaten in combination with a kidney-friendly diet, can protect and support your kidneys. But on the other hand, many people are still worried about oxalate. So who is right? Well, to answer today's question, we must understand what oxalate does in the body. First of all, oxalate is a natural compound found in both in many plants and in the human body as well. This is important, by the way. Now, the body uses oxalate for several functions, such as the metabolism of vitamin C, of amino acids, and for energy production. It even has some health benefits. However, oxalate is also a compound that, like many others, needs to bind to something else, calcium, in order to be excreted by the body. 
this has to happen in the intestine. Now, this is where the problems begin. If you eat a very large amount of oxalate, for example, because you just emptied the jar of peanut butter and you have chronically low levels of calcium in your diet, you may be at risk. At least some people may be at risk. In fact, this huge amount of oxalate is not going to bind to calcium in your intestine where it can be excreted without causing problems. No, it's going to raise the amount of oxalate in your urine. In people predisposed to kidney stones, if this kind of unbalance happens regularly, it may cause even more kidney stones. So thus, this means that we need to stop eating high oxalate foods in order to avoid kidney stones? Are all those comments right? Well, not really. You see, oxalate is a naturally occurring compound always present in our body. This is important, as I was saying, because research found out that just the 10% to 20% of the oxalate we excrete in our urine comes from the food we eat. 80 to 90% of the oxalate present in your urine is made by your body, which means that avoiding high oxalate foods is not going to make a great difference in terms of oxalate excretion and risk for kidney stones. It is only going to deprive you of many of the healthiest foods out there. Okay, but what if you are actually sensitive to oxalate? There are people who are sensitive to oxalate. I don't talk about this too much because they are only about the 1% of the population according to studies. So I don't want to get people worried in vain. I mean, just a small part of the population has recurring kidney stones. So why does everyone with CKD need to follow the diet made for a condition they don't have? Doesn't make sense, does it? However, we must also keep in mind that CKD in some cases may raise your risk of being in this unlucky 1%. In fact, there are two things that can raise your risk for calcium oxalate stones. First is having too little calcium in your diet. And second is, no, it's not oxalate, it's being dehydrated. And this is important. Well, first of all, because some CKD patients need to follow a water restriction. Also, the renal diet, which usually forbids dairy, can be low in calcium. In fact, your best calcium sources include green leafy veggies such as bok choy, but also nuts and soy. But these foods are also in our list of high oxalate foods. Okay, I know this sounds confusing, but there is an easy solution. What to do then? Well, first of all, try not to be scared of veggies. Remember, according to medical literature, your best chance of reversing kidney disease is a plant-based diet and you can completely avoid your risk for kidney stones by adding enough calcium to your diet. Always, always add a source of calcium when eating high oxalate foods. Your best friend here could be a calcium carbonate supplement that has huge benefits for kidney health, by the way. And of course, make sure you are always hydrated. The only people that may actually benefit from a diet that's low in oxalate are those with an history of calcium oxalate stones and that also need to follow a water restriction. Yes, to them, I would recommend to be very careful and to maybe limit, not avoid high oxalate foods. But not everyone needs to worry about these foods, alright? Don't believe in those people recommending you to stop eating veggies altogether, alright? So guys, as promised, you will be able to add back a huge amount of foods to your menu and to protect your kidneys in the process. And I hope that I've made your diet a little bit easier with this video. Ask any question you want about the renal diet in comment section and I will try to help. And if you want to learn more about how to protect your kidneys, my video up here is for you. And this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all. Bye.